Welcome to Tony's Tractor Adventure. Welcome back to uh, part two of this 50 hour service video on the LSMT 125. Uh, if you like what I'm doing, uh, please give us a subscribe and a thumbs up. All right, we're looking at the uh, maintenance chart. We've done the uh, check the fuel tank, looked at the fuel filters, and inspected those. Uh, inspected the uh, or changed the engine oil and oil filter for the 50 hour service. I, it shows to do daily checks on the uh, uh, engine coolant, which I've already done. And then it, every two years you need to change the engine coolant. This tractor was one of the first models of this tractor, so probably on my next service, which would be next spring, regardless of hours, uh, I will go ahead and change the fluid uh, just because it's probably been sitting on the lot for a little while. All right. And it says uh, check the radiator screen uh, and make sure it's cleaned uh, and inspect it. Uh, it says clean up every 50 hours. Well, I do it every day, every time I use it. Now, I'll show you what I do. Now, I find that all these subcompact tractors suffer from being so low to the ground, and especially with the mid-mount mower, because the mower is throwing grass out to the right side of the engine, and if, the, if it's a dry grass and the wind is blowing, it blows it back at the tractor, and then the tractor sucks it back up inside. Well, this screen here protects that. And these tractors, the, my John Deere was bad about it. Uh, I think if you watch Tractor Time with Tim, you'll see him bush hogging or mowing with his tractor, and you'll see that it uh, uh, sometimes overheats, or he starts watching it overheating, and he'll stop it and clean it. Uh, the, uh, the John Deere, the engines face the other direction. Now, uh, on my Massey Ferguson, it was extremely bad. I could, my yard's two and a half acres, and I could not mow my entire yard without having... Uh, to stop and uh, uh, clean the air filter. I had to watch my, my temperature gauge, and my temperature gauge would start rising up a little bit. Well, I would, I would stop, cool the tractor off a little bit, and, and, never over, and never let it overheat, but I would, you know, I noticed the temperature gauge would start rising. Let the tractor cool off a little bit, and I'd pull out the, and, and clean it up. This one doesn't do that bad. I've, I've uh, mowed the yard, let's see, four times now with this tractor, and I've never had it overheat. However, I, I still, each, at the end of each morning, I pull this out and clean this. Now, what I do, if you have a, the ability to use a, uh, uh, a leaf blower, I take and I blow air in, it, you know, forced air in backwards through the radiator with the engine off, and it blows any, any particulates uh, in, in the air in, that make it through into the radiator, it blows it back out backwards. Take the screen out, blow this out backwards, and if you look down in mine, uh, it's absolutely pristine clean. And the, the trick to this do is to do it each time, so you never do it like if you ever have to use it, operate it when it's a little damp or anything like that, that, that grass will harden. Uh, so I do it each time so there's no buildup. And as I look down into my radiator right here, it's absolutely pristine clean at 50 hours and mowing the yard four times. Next thing on the list is the air cleaner. All right, let's go ahead and pop this air cleaner off and we'll see what, what it looks like. Got some dust to use last year. Wouldn't be expected to be a little dirty. There's the air filter. It's a Donaldson air filter, so this is just an over-the-counter uh, air filter that you can buy. Not like the uh, Massey Ferguson. Massey Ferguson air filter is uh, my Massey Ferguson GC1705 had a proprietary air filter from Massey Ferguson on it, and that dude was like 65 bucks every time you change the air filter. This one seems to be in pretty good shape. I'll probably go ahead and order another one. I'm going to blow it out with a with a uh, uh, some air, and then I'll uh, clean the air filter thing here out, and then we'll put it back together. here that uh, uh, I, I wiped up some oil with so it's got a little oil on it and that helps to pick up dust I usually will wipe out the inside of this 
Uh, don't have it dripping with oil. Just have it just a little bit of a little bit of oil on there. Wipe out the inside of that. Wipe out the inside of your filter housing here, so that you're not letting any dust or anything get down in the engine. It's not a bad time to check. I have had instances of vehicles and equipment setting for a long time where a, a mouse got into it and actually made a house in the air filter. Uh, so you, you see it all. Alright, this filter, if you want to know, is a Donaldson. It's a P822686. And I just ordered a replacement uh, on Amazon for 15 bucks shipped to the door. I'm a Prime member, so it doesn't cost anything extra. Air filter's back in. I don't need an air filter right now, but I will probably change it. Uh, this summer will be a, a, a busy mowing season, and uh, the uh, when you mow a lot, you uh, when you when you mow a lot, you uh, uh, definitely get dusty towards the end of the year. Can't talk and do two things at once. All right, the next thing to do is uh, inspect the battery. Shows here to uh, check, uh, you know, adjust and clean up every uh, uh, every 50 hours. So every 50 hours, we're going to pull this off and check this. Now I've already pulled the, the two side screws off. The, I'll show you these. I've already pulled these off from the other side. So now I'll go ahead and pull the two here off. take this loose. Alright, there is two harnesses here. There's, well, actually there's three. There is the cruise control harness which unplugs. I'll unplug mine. I'll unplug that one first because it's easier. And then there's two harnesses here that uh, need to be uh, unplugged. And that way you can pull this away. And that one is yeah, a little difficult. There we go. Now I can pull this panel out of the way. And you can actually get to the battery. Now, this battery is a, it's called a rocket battery. It's made by the, uh, oh, it's a Korean company. I can't think of the, of the name of it. Uh, goodness I, I looked it up one time uh, GB 45L is the battery but it's just a standard car battery uh, I've seen this exact shape and size battery at uh, at like AutoZone so I feel pretty confident when the time comes I could uh, carry this in and have it swapped out all right so what we're going to do now is just pull these loose so you can see them you're going to check them for tightness check them for corrosion I don't see any kind of corrosion. I don't see any kind? Of, it's really clean. And I wash my tractor pretty regular. It's a pretty good looking positive post there. Be aware of rings and things like that that you could short out on a positive post. Uh, I, I'm guilty here. Probably should put a uh, piece of black tape around my ring, but I did okay. I made it. So I got that one done. On the, on the positive side, let's check the negative over here. The negative's not bad. I'm going to dust it off with some brake cleaner. It's no, uh, just a hair dusty. Nothing, nothing I'm worried about. Everything is tight. I feel pretty good about that. Next thing on the checklist is the uh, fan belt tension. Uh, it's technically not required to be inspected uh, or checked until 250 hours, but as an initial service, uh, a 50 hour service, I'm gonna check everything. It's just what I do, you don't have to. All right, when you're checking your, your belt, go ahead and just pull a little bit of pull up with a single finger. You should have some flex. You don't wanna, you don't wanna tighten this thing so tight that uh, you're, you know, you could you take this loose. I've seen people put pry bars, pry the alternator out as hard as they can, and tighten the bolt down, and they're like happy because their belt is so tight, and the belt stretched to the to the nth degree, and that puts a tremendous amount of load on your alternator, and it puts a tremendous amount of load on the bearing 
uh, the bearings on the alternator and the bearing on the water pump. All right, the next thing on the list is the fuel injector nozzles at 1500 hours. Well, obviously, we're not there yet. Uh, we're going to uh, take that opportunity, though, to look at the injector lines. Um, what I'm looking for is shiny stuff. Like these little brackets here, this little bracket holds the three lines together. And the three lines support one another. In fact, this little bracket comes loose and these lines start vibrating and flexing and then they'll metal, metal fatigue and break. So what I'm looking for is anything shiny, you know, like shiny steel. That shiny steel means it's loose or rubbing. So I don't see any kind of indication that there's anything wrong with this little Yanmar and I wouldn't expect it to be.